go for main engine start. On July 8, 2011, Space Shuttle Atlantis launched on the final Space Shuttle mission, STS-135. Up and burning. Two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the Space Shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program... Carried up to the station were only four crew, myriad supplies, and several items in the payload bay. Contingency plans were arranged so that if something happened to Atlantis, the crew of four could return in a series of Soyuz flights. Back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. from Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute, 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied 30-year adventure. Now standing by for external tank separation. After achieving orbit, the crew inspected Atlantis using the orbital boom sensor system and everything looked good for her final trip to the station and back. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Atlantis approached the station. Atlantis, Houston, you are go for the RPM. Go to proceed inside 600 feet. Houston, station, Atlantis on the big loop, initiating RPM in three, two, one, mark. At 180 meters, Atlantis performed the rendezvous pitch maneuver, allowing the station crew to take pictures and video of the underside of the shuttle. The uh, rendezvous officer uh, indicates to Flight Director Quatziella Barujo that uh, Commander Chris Ferguson has flown a textbook R-bar pitch maneuver. After the RPM, Atlantis then approached and docked with the station. Houston and Station Atlantis on the big loop. We don't see a flyout. We're initiating the final approach. Atlantis, arriving. Welcome to the International Space Station for the last time. That's great to be here, Station. We'll see you shortly. The crew entered the station, and after a welcome ceremony and a safety briefing, got to work moving the OBSS to the station's arm to inspect Atlantis one more time. Is the day after docking, the main objective was to install the Rafello multipurpose logistics module on the nadir port of the station's Harmony module. 
9,403 pounds of cargo that will be transferred to the International Space Station over the course of the next several days. On Flight Day 5, Expedition 28 flight engineers Mike Fossum and Ron Garin performed a spacewalk. The main task of the spacewalk included retrieving a failed pump module from an external stowage platform of the ISS for return to Earth inside the shuttle's cargo bay, installing two experiments, and repairing a new base for the station's robotic arm. On flight day six, the crew spent the day moving supplies from the shuttle and Rafello onto the station. The crew started the day 26% through the combined 15,069 pounds of cargo to transfer in or out of the Rafello. The MPLM was launched with 9,403 pounds of cargo and was expected to return with 5,666 pounds when Atlantis landed. The supplies and equipment that Atlantis astronauts delivered to the orbiting outpost was expected to keep the station well supplied through 2012. Over the next few days, cargo would continue to transfer and the crew stayed busy supplying the station. On flight day 11, July 18, 2011, the STS-135 crew returned the Ruffello back to Atlantis's payload bay and closed the hatches between the space station and the shuttle. Space Shuttle Atlantis undocked from the space station early on Flight Day 12, marking the end of shuttle visits to the orbiting outpost. With pilot Douglas Hurley at the controls, undocking occurred at 628 Universal Coordinated Time as the two spacecraft flew over the orbital night above the Pacific Ocean east of Christchurch, New Zealand. Shortly after, in keeping with the naval tradition, flight engineer Ron Garin rang the station's bell in the Harmony module After undocking, Atlantis moved away to a station keeping point about 180 meters ahead of the ISS. A few minutes Before beginning a half lap unique fly, pilot Doug Hurley paused the shuttle by firing thrusters for a moment, and during this time, the space station changed its orientation by rotating 90 degrees to the right. That gave the Atlantis crew a good opportunity to take still camera photographs and shoot video of the station in areas not normally documented on previous shuttle fly rounds. At the end of the half loop, Atlantis did two separation burns to move away from the vicinity of the space station. During the next few days of orbital activity, Atlantis's crew deployed a small 3.7 kilogram PICO satellite, the PICO satellite solar cell experiment, into low Earth orbit using a spring injected canister in the shuttle's payload bay. Fergie, it's time for us to bid you good night. I think I speak for everyone in the room when I say uh, we all feel very privileged to have been a part of the 135 team with you. Also, uh, speaking for everyone really in the space shuttle program, that we're so proud of how you've represented us uh, really to the whole world on this final shuttle mission. Your professionalism and excellence have been really the best kind of tribute to the space shuttle and the many people who are part of its history. So we'll bid you good night, uh, safe travels, and we'll see you back in Houston for the celebration. Now looking over the shoulder of uh, pilot Doug Hurley. The next day, July 21st, 2011, Atlantis performed the deorbit burn, re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, and landed at the Kennedy Space Center on runway 15 at 5.57 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Piercing the pre-dawn sky as the space shuttle announces its arrival at the launch site with its signature sound of twin sonic booms having gone subsonic for the last time. Happy Atlantis, build inside. The 
pre-flare maneuver executed. Landing here down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Ferguson rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end. Atlantis was officially retired at wheel stop. Back on board the station on August 23, 2011, Progress M11M undocked from the aft port of the Svezda. After several maneuvers to carry out the Radar 4 experiment, Progress M11M was deorbited over the Pacific Ocean on September 1st, 2011. On August 24th, 2011, Progress M12M was launched atop a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Site 15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. This morning's launch of uh, Progress 44 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, which took place on time at 8 a.m. Central Time this morning. And uh, into, as you can see, a cloudless sky and seemingly without any incident. However, at 5 minutes and 50 seconds into the flight this morning, during the third stage operations, and uh, just about three minutes shy of achieving orbit, the Russian control teams reported an abnormal situation on board the Progress and a loss of telemetry with the vehicle. The report that was just given to International Space Station Commander Andrei Barasenka from Maxim Matuchin, the head of the MCCM, Approximately 325 seconds into flight, a malfunction was detected in the RD-0110 engine powering the Block 1 third stage of the Soyuz U carrier rocket, which caused the onboard computer to terminate the flight through thrust termination. As a result, the vehicle failed to achieve orbit, re-entering over the Altai Republic of Russia. It was the first failure of a Progress spacecraft since launches began in 1978. On September 9th, the FKA announced that the loss was caused by a blocked fuel duct, which caused the engines to shut down prematurely. The failure was not expected to have any immediate effect on the crew of the International Space Station, as the outpost was stocked with reserves of food, water, and oxygen. The Soyuz TMA-21 crew had been due to come back on September 8th, but its return was delayed due to the crash of Progress M-12M on August 24th. The Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft undocked from the International Space Station on September 16, 2011, and due to an apparent communications malfunction, voice communications from the crew were lost shortly after the deorbit burn, prompting some tense moments on the ground, but otherwise the re-entry and descent went perfectly, and there was no immediate explanation for the communications dropout. On October 29, 2011, Progress M10M undocked from the nadir port of the pier stocking compartment. Progress M10M, loaded with trash, performed a three-minute deorbit burn, entered the Earth's atmosphere, and burnt up over the Pacific Ocean the same day. With Progress M10M undocking, the space station was in a very rare configuration, having only one Russian vehicle docked 
Soyuz TMA-02M to the Rosviet. And the last time this situation occurred was back in March of 2009. On October 30th, 2011, Progress M13M launched atop a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Site 15 at Baikonur Cosmodrome. Main engine start, engine, engine turbo pumps at flight speed, and liftoff. Liftoff of the Soyuz booster and the Progress 45 resupply ship bound for the International Space Station. Pitch and roll program underway. After an extended three-day rendezvous orbit, Progress M13M docked with the Pierce module on November 2nd, 2011. Sending crew to the International Space Station was now solely on the shoulders of Roscosmos. Cosmos.